Early one April morning 25 years ago, I was here at WBIR making calls to local sheriff's departments to see if anything newsworthy happened overnight. That's when a dispatcher in Greene County said to get a news crew there fast. A family was found shot. Only the little boy survived. The senseless murders of the Lily Lids horrified East Tennessee, which then rallied around the toddler. Well, today, Peter Lily Lid Hayer is 27 years old. We recently traveled to his home in Connecticut to hear his story of overcoming tragedy. Working and then you do stuff and you Ordinary. That's how Peter describes his life as a 20 something. It's full, despite tremendous loss. Quite frankly, few people have the uh, uh, courage or motivation, I should say, to ask why. Um, but of course, that's what puts me apart from most other people. My story, that is. His story begins on April 6, 1997. Then, two year old Peter, six year old Tabitha, and their parents, Vidar and Delphina Lillylid, were heading home to Knoxville from a Jehovah's Witness workshop in Johnson City. They pulled into a rest stop in Greene County, a chance meeting with six young people from Kentucky, ranging in age from 20 to 14, proved deadly. They kidnapped the family, forced them to drive their van to a remote gravel road in order to steal it, lined them up along a ditch and gunned them down. Peter, shot twice, was the sole survivor. Of course, the doctors at a hospital who uh, I had medical papers, actually, they they write my name as John Doe as of course they didn't know who I were at the, at the start. Do you remember what happened? Not a single bit. Not a single bit. Two days later, law enforcement tracked down the killers in the stolen van at the Arizona Mexico border crossing. When they were brought back to Greene County, an angry mob was waiting. Vidar's sister, Rhonda Hayer, and her husband, Ode, traveled from Sweden to care for the toddler who had lost his eye and suffered permanent neurological damage. They returned home with Peter and eventually adopted him. In 2007, 10 years later, WBIR traveled overseas to see how Peter had adjusted to his new life. 4,000 miles from East Tennessee. Give him a, a, a life. <laughs> to give him a new family. Never, he says, did his adoptive parents shield him from the tragic truth. I've always known about it and always had age-appropriate information about it in a way. I will have never been traumatized by the knowledge of it, as strange as it may sound, yes. But Peter shares a jarring moment when he was four or five, riding in a car when his father quickly swerved but apparently they made, it made me absolutely inconsolable. And they suspected that I was some, that I was somehow related to what happened on that day in uh, April. 25 years later, Peter chooses to look forward, not back. In 2019, Peter made the decision to move back to the United States. He eventually landed here in Stanford, Connecticut, where he works in the world of IT. And in 2020, another milestone. Peter got married. I honestly feel very blessed to be a part of his story and to have a place in his life. Peter and his wife, Caitlin, have settled into life together. Despite all he lost, he gives little thought to the crime or the criminals, now in their 40s, serving life sentences. Peter has nothing to say to them. His message is to the people of East Tennessee and beyond. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for everything you did. Um, it played out very well in the end, as well as good as it could have been, for sure. Peter's mother, Rondi, still lives in Sweden. His father, Ode, passed away two years ago from cancer. Over the past 25 years, Peter has visited East Tennessee numerous times. Coming up tonight at 11, Peter shares why he returns.